Hello Internet, Big Dave here and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I only paid $5 for Magic the Gathering Duel of the Planeswalkers 2012. This game normally retails for $10. This game is probably the epitome of my cheapness. I have wanted this game since it was released, and I kept telling myself, it's going to go on sale, it's going to go on sale. This past weekend, I almost bought this game. I had it in my cart, ready to go. I was finally giving up on the idea that it was ever going to go on sale for less than $10. I got a little busy, I forgot to finish the purchase, and bam. It is now on sale. Midweek Madness on Steam. Oh, I am so relieved that I did not pull the trigger on that purchase. I would have never stopped beating myself up over that. Ah. <sighs> It feels good to get what you want at the price that you want. Magic the Gathering. If you've never played the game, this video will probably not teach you how to play the game. I'll try to fill you in on some of the goings-on of Magic the Gathering, as well as just give you my thoughts on this game itself. This was created by Stainless Games. They've done a lot of retro remakes, as well as a few board games, which really puts them in a good place to do a game like this that is uh, very menu-heavy, so to speak quick look at some of the options that are available. Here's the campaign which we will be playing. I've just started this game up. I have not touched it. So we are going to be fresh into a brand new experience here. Multiplayer, custom game, extras, no idea, DLC, and we can exit. Menu system's a little clunky. It feels like a console menu. Deck manager, achievements, leaderboards, and options. It feels very much like the sort of thing you would go through with the shoulder buttons, you know, left and right. So, pretty simple, bare bones. We're just going to do about 5 to 10 minutes worth of gameplay and try to get some good footage for you guys. So, let's get going. Hmm, okay. Campaign. I have no watch enemy. Revenge. Tutorial. We shall skip it. Defeat this planeswalker to unlock his deck. Okay, what deck am I using? To the deck manager. Okay, only two options to start. Just go ahead and stick with the default that they've given us. Back to the campaign. Koth, we shall slay thee. No, I do not. Oh, wow. I picked this guy based on his facial portrait, just because I thought he looked uh, like uh, the old Prodigal Sorcerer art from uh, the 4th edition. But now that I see he's holding a glowing skull, kind of kind of regretting that. Oh, okay, so you choose your deck here. I see. Continue. To the playing surface. This is your initial hand, a draw of seven cards. I have no lands. Lands are the way that you cast things. I can cast nigh any cards in my hand. Because I have no land, I will take a mulligan and draw a new hand. I have two lands in this hand. I could do worse. Quick analysis shows me that I do have a card I can cast first turn. That's cool. We'll keep this hand. Because if I were to choose to draw a new hand, I would have to take a reduced number of cards. Don't want to do that. My enemy goes first. So with magic, you have colored decks. Those colors each have their own speciality. He is casting himself a little creature. White, for instance, is, you know, it's a pure... Uh, and it highlights the cards you can cast. You know, white is pure, it's angelic. A lot of the creatures can fly. There's some healing in white, that sort of thing. Red, which my opponent's playing. Red, which my opponent is playing, relies a lot on direct damage, throwing fireballs and lightning bolts and all manner of, of direct damage at, at your opponent. Small creatures, some dragons, things like that. Black decks, the deck of death can banish creatures from the playing field, and do all sorts of uh, undead horde raising and whatnot. Okay, let's zoom this card. What's this feller do? Oh, just a pretty standard creature. All right. He shall go into play. 
the green deck is, is the nature deck. It relies on heavy, large creatures and, and does a little bit of healing as well. Do we want to attack? He has a creature, I have a creature. They would kill each other. Eh, what the hell. Attack. Let's see, did we miss anything? White, red, black, green, blue. Ah, uh, yes, blue is probably the most wizard-like deck. It relies on interrupting your opponent's spells and control, holding out, using the power of water to summon large leviathan creatures. Blue is actually one of my favorite colors next to white. A 1-1 one -one with the first strike. It's going to be a faster and easier way to zoom in on this. When a creature dies, you put okay. All right. Zoom out. Nothing I can do. It's all yours, buddy. So those are your deck types, your basic... Thank you. Lots of tutorial things going on. Uh, your basic options. When, you're, when you have a deck, these are the different things that those individual decks are going to, uh, going to offer you. Ah, the Sarah Angel. One of my all-time favorites. I will play her as soon as humanly possible. I don't even know what that was. I did not mean to play that. What is that? What did I just do? Okay, so it's... Okay, it's equipment. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So yeah, blue and... Uh, his first strike. Let's go ahead and attack. So blue and white are my favorite colors in magic. We are... I said attack. Okay. He chose not to block. Alright, that's one way to do it. So as the tip just said, winning the game, you'll notice he has a life total. I have a life total. The first person to get their opponent to zero life total wins the game. You can also win the game by running your opponent out of cards. What be this? Oh, see. A bit of strategy on his part. He has a creature with haste. Hasted creatures can attack as soon as they come out. Otherwise, creatures have to wait a turn before they can attack. He did not... Yes, he wanted my creature tapped and out of the way. My creature attacks, I tap it like this. When a creature is tapped, it cannot block. So he's now free to attack with both of his creatures. But he didn't. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I like that. That shall be on you. So I've now nullified that creature. So, as I said, you're not going to learn how to play Magic from watching this. Uh, what I can tell you, though, is uh, I've played the game for a while, Magic. Uh, I first picked it up right around 3rd edition. Uh, right around the release of the 4th edition. So we're talking about mid-90s here uh, when I first started playing. Not quite. A little bit clunky here with constantly having to press continue and... Yeah. Ah. Microbro is playing Spiral Knights. What have we here? Well, that's good. Killing my creature. So, you know, what we're simulating here with magic, I mean, the whole idea behind this game is that we are two powerful wizards and we are fighting one another. And we're doing everything that we can to facilitate that battle. You know, we're summoning creatures to our aid, we're throwing spells, we're, we're summoning our magic from, from the very land itself, you know, from the earth. And uh, it, it does a pretty good job of, of doing that. I mean, uh, these sort of uh, co collectible card games are, they're all over the place now, but... Uh, Magic was really the first one. I mean, it was certainly the first one I became aware of. Tap target creature your opponent controls. Hmm. That's interesting. I think I'll hold on to that, though. So, yeah, I mean, it certainly was one of the, the first ones that I ever encountered. I mean, I'm not going to say with any uh, absolute certainty that it was the first, but it was damn close to the first. So... <sighs> I've been playing it for a while. I enjoy it a lot, and a, and a game like this helps me to enjoy it uh, in a way that I could not otherwise, because most of my cards are out of date. They're old. Two cards from your grave. Okay. 
And it's difficult to find, necessarily find people my age who have cards and who want to play. So a game like this gives me a chance to experience something from my youth, as it were. Another piece of equipment there. And do it in an interesting fashion. I really want that Sarah Angel. And I will select... Mia. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this sort of a game is really attractive to someone like me, uh, an older gentleman who is uh, in a position to, uh, not necessarily in a position to show up at a comic book shop and feel like he can fit in with a bunch of kids who are playing this game who are, uh, at, at minimum, half his age. Uh, skip that attack phase. So one thing you'll notice is that the, the, the turns are split up into phases. First, you start out by untapping any of your cards that are tapped. Um, then you're able to cast spells followed up with a chance to attack. You can then cast spells again after the attack, and from there, hmm, from there, you can, uh, you, you turn it over to your opponent. See, this is when I start to get, because if this was a person, a human person, there's no way that he would attack with one 2-2 two, two creature. Like, he's got to have some kind of a, he's got to have some kind of a gimmick here. He's got, he's got to have some reason that he's attacking. Okay, it's got first strike. Okay, that's why he's attacking. And a creature has died, so yeah, it's a 2-2. The more creatures that it kills, the bigger that it gets. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Koth. Hmm. Alright, well, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take that 2 damage. Koth, what about that? There you go. Hit me with your best shot, buddy. So just in terms of the game itself, some of the interface is a little bit clunky. Uh, but I do like a lot of what's going on, a lot of what they have. Um, I like that they have the little decks here that you can see. This is the layout that you would do with your cards if you were actually playing the game, you know, with a friend or in a shop or in a tournament. Um, you know, this is this is kind of how you, you'd lay your cards out like this. So you get the feel of that, um, the feeling of being at the table actually playing the game. And like I said, a company like this that is focused on making a lot of uh, retro remakes or, or more really more specifically focused on making uh board games, translation of board games, they're really in a great spot to, to create a game like this. When Core Outfitter enters the battlefield, you may attach target equipment you control to target creature you control. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so we'll, we'll play him. And that means that uh, normally this would cost me four of my lands to attach, but uh, I can attach it for free. Because that dude is so cool. We should attach it like so. Excellent. Makes my creature very big and very brawny. Alright guys, well I think that's pretty much going to do it. I'm going to keep playing Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planes Duel of the Planeswalkers 2012. I'm going to skip this attack. Uh, this game is on sale. Midweek Madness right now. $5. I would invite you to buy it. If you enjoy such things, Magic is a complex game to learn. It has a, a deep rule system. Consider your purchase very carefully. I can highly recommend it. Um, based on what I've played here, I, I would give the game a 4 out of 5. I definitely feel that it's worth what I paid for it. Fact is, though, I should have bought it for $10. I, I would have bought it for $10. But at the same time, the cheap bastard in me is reveling in the fact that I held out and I got it for five bucks. So, guys, take a look at Magic the Gathering. If you like the game, if you know the game, you will enjoy this game. If you don't, give it a go. The tutorial system will walk you through learning how to play. I have played the previous versions of this game, and uh, they are fairly... Uh, uh, the pre previous version of this game, and it is fairly approachable. Alright, guys. Magic the Gather Gathering... Can I even... Magic the Gathering... Duel of the Planeswalker 2012. Duel of the Plane, Planeswalkers 2012. Oh, goodness. All right, guys. Until next time, I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy.